and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone. Now, today we are looking at a quite a auspicious creature, the Thalamus. Now please join me as we examine this strange aspect of nature. Is it Thalamuses or is it Thalami? This is a question that has plagued both the mines and oceans of Europa unique even to its own parasitic nature, using the shell of a submarine to expand and protect its own growth. Yet, this being hasn't been seen in other cases, not inhabiting alien ruins or living inside the hauled out shells of abyssal creatures. So why has it only been seen in human-made constructs? Anatomy of the Thalamus Despite being classified as a botanical being, the Thalamus does very little to relate itself to plant-type life on Earth. In fact, it would seem that the Thalamus would be more of a colonial organism than any form of plant. Perhaps the most puzzling aspect of this being is its preferred protection. That is, a sunken submarine. Or at least that's the most that can be cleaned, as examples of Thalamus settling in other locations hasn't been witnessed. In fact, the Thalamus almost seems to predate on submarines alone, as other creatures seem to purely leave them alone and vice versa. But how could this be? Human presence on Europa is only fairly recent, so it's hard to quantize how the Thalamus would come to specialize in sinking and appropriating submarines as a form of protection. And not just the hull, provided that the weaponized apparatuses of a submarine still survive, the sinking and wear of time as well, the Thalamus is capable of extending some form of control over these, and if the guns are lost, it seems the Thalamus will simply replace them with weaponized harpoons filling in the spot. What this might mean is the Thalamus is capable of extreme adaptation and manipulation of its environment. Early in its life cycle, the Thalamus is referred to as ballast flora, simple spores floating in the vast ocean of Europa until perhaps some life form or submarines intakes this organism, at which point the ballast flora undergoes a radical transformation from a loose collection of spores to an organism with intent. The ballast flora creates a spiked, hardened, core-like carapace with bulging white eye-like structures. Afterwards, this lesser thalamus takes hold of nearby functions, which in most cases of submarine infestation is the ballast pump and nearby hatch controls, which in case of threat, the lesser thalamus will flood its chamber and shut off all access that it can. Though if these defenses fail, the thalamus is also capable of releasing a lethal acidic gas capable of disposing of humans quite quickly. Once a lesser thalamus has had ample time to grow, or gone unnoticed, it will begin to venture out past its infested chamber, moving by growing out a red, mucus-like structures and organs as it seeks sources of electricity. Once a source is located, the lesser thalamus will begin to quickly siphon power to quicken its own growth, and death or sinking of the infested host. Granted that the Lesser Thalamus is successful, the Lesser Thalamus slowly grows into a proper Thalamus, though its size seems to be dependent on the size of the host, and how much space it is given. Though this process will take years before it develops into a more substantial threat to passing submarines, and may simply go unnoticed. Over the years, the Thalamus will begin to almost change species in a way going from a creature that acts like a slime mold to one that's more akin to a siphonophore, a colonial superorganism that is a collection of specialized creatures or cells that depend on each other for their specialized roles in order to survive. In a certain way, the thalamus mimics this. As it grows, it begins to develop specialized organs. First, the thalamus develops a core. The organ itself is similar to the lesser thalamus core that develops on the pump of a submarine during initial infestation. Once the core is fully formed, two long tentacle-like protrusions will begin to explore the submarine for a suitable location. If found, the thalamus core will begin distributing specialized cells to that area. What is formed depends on this location itself. If it's a choke point, so to speak, a cell spawn organ will be grown to further defend the brain. Within this, a 
symbiotic being called a leucocyte or a leucocyte is bred to defend the internal areas of a thalamus wreck. Due to the nature of the leucocyte, it will be discussed along with terminal cells regarding flesh guns and flesh spikes. Eventually, given enough space and the proper ports, the thalamus will grow a flesh gun and a flesh spike. These hunting mechanisms are used in tandem to quickly subdue nearby submarines. First, the flesh gun will fire a barbed spike attached to a long tendon that will reel in the sub. Then, once pulled down, the flesh spike will impale it and begin flooding the inside of the sub with a symbiotic creature called terminal cells, which is the attack counterpart to the leukocyte. These organisms nearly look identical, both being large-celled organisms, being red and green respectively. The only real difference between the two is in their function. Why the leukocyte is the defender of the thalamus and has strong acidic attacks and venom to paralyze threats, the terminal cell is a kamikaze, trying to cause as much damage to the sub as possible. As well, it's unwise to remove these pests through physical means, as they explode upon death. Ranged implements are necessary to the safety of the crew in this case. The last known organs a thalamus develops is a support organ called the flesh gun ammo sac and a bulbous organ of unknown purpose. As per its name, the ammo sac acts as a repository for the muscles and tendons used in reeling in and impaling a submarine, and when destroyed, the flesh gun and spike will shut down. The last organ is probably the most mysterious in function compared to the others, as it serves no offensive, defensive, or supportive type roles. Though when dissected, it's not entirely uncommon to find swim bladders and other things within the strange organ. With that in mind, it may serve as the stomach of sorts for the creature, processing whatever the thalamus manages to drag in. Though it is impossible that the organ is also a part of a form of farming mechanism similar to that of fungi and lichen, as algae within the lichen grows carbohydrates that the fungi can use to grow and reproduce, though this organ also simply might be some form of filter feeding. So why do thalami only inhabit subs? This is a very puzzling part of its biology. If it really has adapted to humans, this would mean a complex awareness and an adaptation to its environment. Though, it might be entirely possible to explain both of these with a few simple answers. 1. Why don't we see thalami in corpses of other creatures? Well, due to the voracious nature of Europa's fauna and environmental factors of sinking down into the abyss and eventually the volcanic floor, it's possible that natural thalamus infection doesn't last very long, as their hosts simply rot away and leave the thalamus unprotected to the elements, and creatures looking to nibble on an easy meal, unlike a mobile metal creature that boasts somewhat more protection than that of the average creature and or corpse. Two. How does the thalamus manipulate human tech? As complex as human technology is, nature usually beats humanity to similar types of mechanisms. In nature, we see certain aspects of mechanics, like that of the nymphs of the insect species Isis coleoptras, have gear-like aspects in their legs that prevent them from spiraling while jumping. And there are plenty of examples that the thalamus could learn such behavior, such as electrical flows and defenses from the alien ruins, to the EMP-like nature of the Black Moloch. And for guns, it may have come from manipulating the corpses of a spineling, which said the creature's primary offense is firing bony protrusions at its prey. So, truly, it could be more of a coincidence than the thalamus adapting to human technology, aside from just getting lucky with a sturdier home. So at the end of the day, what is a thalamus? Most likely, the thalamus is a colonial superorganism, though to what extent is very hard to define, as at the speed which the thalamus spreads is truly incredible, as where does the biomass for such movement even come from? 
active consumption and then turning it into biomass for cell division and or budding could play a key role here, but these two options could possibly be too slow for it to take down a sub. So due to the functions of the thalamus's specified organs, it's likely that the thalamus is a result of extreme mutualism, where along its evolution, the core of the thalamus has learned to get along with other small organisms and to rapidly recruit them into a colony-like structure. By situating itself in the ballast tank and quickly flooding in more organisms to command and spread to take over its new home. Honestly, the Coalition might want to look into some serious filters to avoid thalamus losses going forward. Thank you for listening to another one of my videos. The thalamus has truly been the most hard creature to uh, describe in any anatomical or biological way. A class of organism like this hasn't necessarily been seen in nature, and the possibilities of its adaptations are almost endless. As Depending on its size and how much space it has, there could be different combinations of thalamus that we will never see due to the harshness of the European biosphere. This script went through a couple of different rewrites and a lot of frustration. Thank you for listening. My name is Hailstone, and I hope you have an absolutely pleasant day. Please have a good one.